hello friends and uh, welcome to my channel again in uh, today's video we are going to speak on a very important subject that is MT obturations basically you know how to do an MT apexification uh, where we are placing uh, one uh, tiny increment or maybe four to five millimeters only in the apical third I already have a video on uh, how exactly is that done uh, the procedure how it is done uh, you can you know check the link that is there at the uh, top of your screen well friends before i start the video i hope you have subscribed to my channel because i make interesting videos related to endodontics rubber dam composites and posterior indirect restorations uh, so let's jump on to our subject that we are going to discuss today okay so friends uh, there are uh, four main properties that i want from my obturative material to fulfill so first is it should be inert second it should promote healing third is that it should be antibacterial and fourth is that it should seal 100 uh, percent that the two uh obturating material that we commonly use in our day-to-day interactive -day practice is gutta percha and mta mta as a as a perception it has been told to us that you know it is mainly used for open apex cases where uh gutta percha cannot be used because you know the size of the apical foramen is is quite large and uh, that large gutta percha is not available maybe you need to customize the gutta percha by you know uh combining three cones melting it and forming that difficult size but it is a cumbersome task to do so mta is a more better choice but Honestly, in my experience, I feel that MTA is an amazing material even for routine cases. And whenever I have a case of free treatment which has a periapical lesion, MTA is definitely my first choice. Therefore, when it comes to gutta percha, it is definitely inert. It does not react to the body. It promotes healing, of course, not directly, but it indirectly because you know we have cleaned and shaped well uh, but two main drawbacks it is not antibacterial and it does not seal 100 percent on the on the contrary with mta mta fulfills all the four properties that are needed from any obturative material so definitely mta has an upper hand as compared to gutta percha in endodontics well the problems uh, that we face when we are obturating with gutta percha is that it does not seal the apical foramen completely okay and if uh, some kind of gutta percha gets extruded out of the apical foramen then there is a possibility that uh, a lot of biofilm may grow and the new bacterial colony may develop and cause reinfection at a later date and there is no bactericidal effect that comes out of the material itself well uh, so it can get extruded if the proper the length of the uh, entire canal is not judged properly i already have an interesting video on how to use apex locator the link of the same is there uh, at the top end of your screen you can go ahead and check the same well so what is the best part of mta why does mta has an upper hand as compared to gutta Bucha? because first and foremost it is a, it is a hydrophilic material so it loves water okay on the contrary when it comes to gutta Bucha, uh, we want the canal to be completely dried enough uh, so that the resin sealer uh, so that it uh, water or the moisture from the dentine does not interfere with the resin sealer to set okay this does not happen with mta mta as it is hydrophilic it loves water but uh, we should not be uh, lenient to such an extent that we are leaving the canal wet and obturating with mta no that should not be the case okay so it should just be moist dirty second is that it is biocompatible with the body third is that it has an alkaline ph so in, so being an alkaline ph it has the ability to have an antibacterial antifungal you know the all the bacteria all whatever microbial colony that is there in the apical third and the periapical environment all of this gets gets eliminated completely and one another important factor of mta or advantage of mta is that it is it can form bone it can form cementum it can form pdl everything so whatever tissue is there in the periapical environment it has the ability to regenerate whatever has been lost okay so this so that is the reason why this amazing material that was you know uh, invented by dr mohammed Rabinajar is really a game changer in, in endodontics and I, I would highly recommend that all of you definitely implement uh, use of mta into day-to-day -day endo practice so friends there are two main factors that we need to consider when we are obturating a particular canal with mta first is the curvature and second is the length so let's see how these two factors play a very important role okay in day-to-day uh, -day mta obturations 
So here uh, I'm showing a graphic representation of a root canal. Now in case if I have a straight root that is absolutely straight, it has no curvature and uh, there is a bank on axis uh, right in the apical third, then I can simply take my plugger okay and push that tiny empty increment that i have placed into the canal till the apical third well this gets complicated if i have a curvature so moment i have a curvature whatever increment that i have pushed in the coronal or the middle third i, I am not able to push that increment with my plugger till the apical third so in this bargain what happens is that we are unnecessarily giving a lot of pressure with my pluggers to take the tiny MD increment till the apical third. And in this bargain, there is a high risk that I may fracture the root or I may create some cracks in the dentin which may at a later date turn out into full-fledged fractures. So, so therefore, whenever there is curvature, it is a bit difficult to pass MTA till the apical third. So uh, to relate all of this clinically, there are two main situations where the roots can be straight or whether they can be curved. So the distal canals in mandibular molar and the parietal canal of maxillary molar, we have pretty much you know straight line access okay till the apical third and whatever increment that I drop it in the uh, coronal third or mi middle third with the help of my pluggers, I can definitely push it till the apical third without any issue. But this does not happen with the mesial canals or mandibular molar or buccal canal of maxillary molars. They always have some kind of curvature that is uh, that starts from the middle third and it goes on till the apical third so therefore uh, you know passing of mta or uh, you know pushing the mta till the apical third becomes slightly tricky in these kind of cases well when it comes to length of the root of course shorter teeth which are there and very comfortably able to you know uh, push the mta from the coronal or the middle third till the apical third but moment we have longer teeth, you know, something like a canine, okay, which has a length of more than 25 millimeters. Like in, in some cases, uh, we have the length of even more than 30 millimeters. Then in these kind of cases, we even don't have pluggers which are of that particular length. Okay, and uh, I've seen cases, you know, where uh, a endodontic file, a rotary file is used to push that particular empty increment in the apical third, but friends, it is not easy and a lot of material gets wasted. So pluggers are definitely a more better option when it comes to pushing of the empty till the apical third. Okay, so to bring all of this into perspective, whenever I am, uh, I have, I have decided that I want to obturate a case with MTA, I have four basic options that are there in front of me. Okay, the first option is that I obturate the entire root canal with MTA, right from the apical third till my coronal third, I can obturate the entire canal with MTA. The second option that I have in front of me is that I do a hybrid obturation, where I am obturating the apical third with my MTA that is four to five millimeters increment and then the rest of the canal is obturated with my back fill. Okay, uh, so this is normally known as MTA apexification, okay, where we are using two materials to, to obturate the obturate a particular canal. Okay. In some kind of cases where I need a pushing pole to be done, now here is where uh, things really turn interesting okay so in uh, so in a case where the tooth has been broken down okay and i need to do MT obturation plus pushing board now the main drawback of mta is the setting time that is available okay so now the setting time of mta is 24 hours so i cannot do the pushing board in the same appointment so once the mta application has been completed i need to place a temporary filling and I need to recall the patient again after 24 hours to do my post report. Why? Because MT is still not set and in case if I apply agent, water, etc., the, the MT is going to get washed off, which I which I don't want it to happen. So the best case scenario, okay, what I do in my day-to-day -day practice in these kind of cases is that I do a MT application I do a tiny backfill over it of gutta percha and then I complete the potion core in the same appointment. Okay, so this is like a win win situation where I don't need to recall the patient again after 24 hours just to do my potion core. 
okay so in a single anesthesia single appointment single isolation uh, the mta apexification and the postnatal code is completed together so what do i want from my mta i want my mta material to be precisely placed only in the upper catheter so none of the extra material should be you know sticking to the coronal or the middle part well this is realistically possible when i have a broken okay so when i have a broken tooth and i need to do uh, some kind of uh, mta apexation with postnatal core uh, the i can easily take my mta carrier and, and place my increment near the apical third by which with the help of luggers i am able to push the same increment till the apical third this is uh, this happens when we are using stainless steel mta carriers but when i have an intact tooth then the incisal edge and the cingulum that is there present near the cervical third they act like an interference in carrying my mta carrier and please and delivering the mta till the middle third or the apical third so in these kind of cases sometimes you need to be slightly aggressive and you need to create some kind of convenience form in which i will be able to Uh, push my increment or deliver my mt increment through the mt carrier still the middle third okay so to give you an example of this take a look at this case that is there in front of you now both the teeth which are there are have trauma and have open apex case and they are indicated to do mt apex fusion case the tooth that you see on the left hand side of your screen is a broken down tooth okay so in these kind of cases i my stainless steel mta carrier i am able to push or or i am able to pass it to such an extent that it is going beyond apical third but this is not happening with the case that you see on the right hand side of your screen so what is happening here is that uh, the the incisal edge and the cingulum are acting like an like an interference and it is not letting my mta carrier go even till the middle third area so this is where the nickel titanium mta carriers are a, again a game changer i don't want to name the company here because again, again it will be very biased if i take any company names but nickel titanium carriers are definitely a uh, a good option to use when you are uh, when when you are working with mta so what basically the nickel titanium uh mt carriers do is that since the uh, the material is made up of nickel titanium i can flex the carrier itself so that i can deliver the material more deeper into the canal later on with with the help of pluggers and paper point i can push the same increment till the apical third so definitely when i am comparing stainless steel mt carriers to the uh, uh, nickel titanium mt carriers one should definitely invest in the nickel titanium mt carrier it definitely be worth your money okay so now coming on to the two important questions so now what do i do in cases where there is uh, where i'm not able to you know uh, push my uh, my nickel titanium mt carrier also deep into the canal though so in these kind of cases my first choice of material is to use a gutta percha and bioceramic seal in endodontics we are slowly moving towards uh, obturation with calcium silicate cement because we know that mta and uh, similar kind of materials they have an added advantage what i have already spoken in the earlier part of the presentation so in those kind of cases if i obturating with gutta percha and bioceramic sealer then bioceramic again has that has those four important properties that i need from my obturating material so and the most important thing is that it promotes healing so in so the four situations uh, where i obturate or where i use gutta percha plus bioceramic sealer are buccal canals in the maxillary molar nasal canals of the mandibular molar any tooth that has curvature and any tooth that has na narrow diameter so these are the four situations where i use gutta percha plus bioceramic sealer in my day to day practice because i know these materials mta bioceramic sealer or any calcium silicate cement they have an added advantage of uh, promoting healing having antibacterial effects you know it it, it can form bone dentin cementum whatever uh, whatever is there in the peripheral environment So friends I hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, please do uh, share this video with uh, all of your friends and what what is your best opportunity material please do uh, feel free to comment in the section below I'll be more than happy to read your comments and see you again in the next video
Thank you.